given the size of some of our virtual interims, that's uh, impressive. Okay, so I guess we're going to start. Um, let me see, I'll make sure I'm speaking into the microphone. I'm Michael Richardson. Uh, my uh, co-chair, Nicholas, is uh, remote, coming from um, Helsinki, right? No, Sweden. No. Lund, Lund in Sweden. Sweden, yeah. Okay, yes. well, you know, <laughs> close enough, right? So the Finnish people, uh, you know, you could always mistake that way, but not the other way around, right? <laughs> huh? Yeah, it's Western Helsinki, yes. Um, uh, so uh, welcome to today's, I think this is our first physical meeting. Um, do we have a physical boss? No. I think we had a physical, no, we didn't have a physical boss. No, it, no, was, a it, first, was... it was a first virtual during Corona. Yeah, okay, so this is our actual first in-person meeting ever for ASDF. Um, and uh, anyway, let's go on. So welcome. Uh, you'll be recorded. This is all on the internet. Um, please be nice to each other. Um, and if you have any questions about IPR, then you should ask. Um, that's the URL. Um, this is our note well. It details more things about this. And in particular, um, be nice to each other. Um, speak slowly. Uh, kick me if I don't do that. Um, and address the technical issues, not the people. Um, thanks. Um, and uh, uh, please use the microphone for any comments you have. Please use the, uh, the microphone line app because if you're remote, then that gets us in the right uh, page, uh, uh, the right queue thing. Um, and uh, we need to use the microphone so that remote people can actually uh, hear what you're saying. You can't just shout across the room. Uh, so this is our agenda today. Um, logistics we've done. As I said, please log into the blue sheet. Uh, if you've connected by Meet Echo, that's been done already for you. Uh, we're going to go through uh, working group status, and um, uh, uh, we're going to talk with STF. And Elliot, you put your hand up, did you? Did. Yeah, go ahead. You you want more time? I think is what you. With apologies, uh, I think we need just a little bit more than five minutes. How about this. eight minutes? I'm sorry, eight minutes. How about eight minutes? We'll take it. Okay. So <laughs> it's 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 gonna it's gonna you know so essentially we you got to get your information through for us to have a, a rechartering update and that's the bulk of the conversation for today. So um, I guess the key thing is to talk less about the protocol and more about the why. Will do. Okay. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Nicholas for the update. Yes, thank you, Michael. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Perfect. Uh, so, yeah, as, as we just said, um, this group was chartered in 2020. And because we had, and we had the first buff in the spring of the 2020 during the first uh, Corona spring. And um, so far, we've had uh, four ITFs with hackathons. We've done nine virtual interims. And what we've ended up with is the specification, which is almost ready for SDF. Uh, that's gone through working group last call uh, and sort of the shepherd review done and so on. Um, in addition, uh, there has been a number of additional documents related to this created. Uh, we can talk about the next page. And then sort of going ahead, what we're aiming for next, of course, depends on, on the kind of recharter or can we do this within the current charter discussion that we'll have at the end of this meeting. Next slide, please. Uh, I just gave it to you. Uh -huh. Okay, then I'll have to, there. Okay, um, and I know that Kirsten will mention some of these documents a bit more. We basically have the main SDF document, that's the key one. Uh, then we have three, we had a number of others that were expired. Uh, three other SDF related documents, one on compact format, one on relations, and uh, one on SDF type for links. And then um, uh, there are a few others uh, that have expired, as I said, on talking about mapping to Yang and so on. Um, <clears throat> and additionally to those uh, four drafts, there are now two others that are kind of potentially related that we'll hear a bit about today. For the one from uh, on, on, on NIPSI and the other one on uh, location format for uh, SDF. Right. Um, 
So with that, I'm mean, trying to push things through here. So let's go to the first, um, uh, hand it over to Karsten to present where the SDF draft is now. Okay, so we're going to, pardon me? Am I giving the page number at the end, or am I going in that question? Uh, SDF. Uh, yes, you're giving the document status. Okay. Okay, and um, do, 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 that's the wrong thing. Uh, recent changes, future work, is that the one? Yes. Yes. Okay, My so I will and... tell you what we have changed in the document, and then later on I will tell you what the document is about. I think that's very usual for, for an idea. Um, I think I can do this relatively quickly. Um, so uh, we had a working class call that um, ended, um, oops, just this side, gone. Uh, we had a working class call that, that ended on September 20th. Um, we got uh, a number of, of pretty detailed comments, which took a little while to actually uh, process, uh, published a dash 16 based on those uh, comments, and then we got some more uh, comments. So we, we are not happy, we, we did get some feedback that we wanted. And yesterday we, we published uh, Dash 17. So the, the plan was uh, to, to submit this uh, Dash 17 yesterday and uh, then to, to for the chairs to press the button. Um, of course, that uh, <laughs> didn't work out because first of all, I lost one PR when, when building that 17, uh, but there are also a few more details uh, still coming. Uh, in so uh, we will probably have a dash uh, 18 uh, next week. Um, so one question that we have to decide is uh, which things are written in typewriter fonts and which are not written in typewriter fonts. Something like <laughs> that. Uh, so so that 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 is not complicated, but it, it has to be done, and probably outside the hectic of this uh, meeting. So um, if everything works out, I, I hope to do uh, the working chairs to publish this, uh, to, uh, to submit this to ISG for publication. Okay, so um, just quickly what happened uh, in Dash 17, as I said, there were tons of editorial stuff and we also have defined a few new, new words. Um, so we already had groups, we now also have groupings, which are something completely different. Uh, so you, you have to read uh, this uh, careful. Uh, one problem is that, that uh, some of the most useful terms were taken early in, in the 1DM process that led to the specification. So um, we, we are always looking for new words uh, uh, to, to do things. Uh, but I think we now have it uh, consistent. Uh, we have a new section 3.4 um, that explains that top level definitions are not declarations, so they don't actually create something by themselves, but uh, they can be referenced from other places uh, to create something. This is the, the new section, is what I missed in Dash 17. So that will be the next version, but you can look at the full request. Um, we asked for a content format assignment because it, it just turns out we, we need to have more and more places where we need this number and it's four lines of um, IANA request, so, so let's just go for that. And we are way off from exhausting the 16 bits we have. Uh, we added a description in the information block. Uh, that was a little bit anemic. Uh, before you couldn't really put much information in there, now you can put uh, more information in there. And finally, the only real Significant technical change is that uh, we, we put back a way for SDF required to actually have short local references. So SDF required tells you what other parts um, actually are required to, to build uh, something. And so far we have absolute JSON pointers. So you always have to go through the tree to the place that you uh, require. And um, we, we now have a way to uh, point to a grouping or an, an affordance that is within the current grouping or uh, for an affordance or grouping to actually point to itself and say, uh, hi, I'm, I'm important. Um, 
So uh, this is the, <coughs> can I use the, the laser pointer here? This is the way this had to be done up to dash 16. Uh, you would have a full uh, fragment identifier based on a JSON pointer. So you have two levels of escapement uh, we just <laughs> thought of. Um, uh, in this case, from an SDF object uh, to temperature with alarm to SDF property to start uh, temperature. And the, the local version of this, assuming that we are in SDF object temperature with alarm SDF property, the local SDF require would just give that name. Um, so that, that's, of course, much easier to uh, manage. Um, or what also is possible is that um, in the, the um, affordance over temperature event, uh, we actually put the SDF required in. We have a slightly clumsy syntax, syntax to say this here, which is uh, a single, uh, single element array with a true in it. And uh, that then uh, details the particular property as necessary. Okay, so that, that's all I wanted to say about uh, what we did. So if you followed the working with last call and, and the comments there, uh, please uh, uh, check that what you need is uh, in there. Okay, um, now I can talk about the future and I mostly will do this with slides from the last uh, interim, slightly uh, updated. Um, given that this spec, uh, which we call SDF base, because we are optimistic to add something to it later on. Uh, because that is done, we are now looking at some um, elements of, of the picture that we haven't completed yet. And uh, one is uh, mapping files, uh, which provide a way to augment a basic um, SDF base specification with information um, typically for putting an ecosystem information. So when an SDF spec tells you um, that um, the temperature uh, sensor does this and that, uh, you might want to add, oh, and in OMA, it's uh, 3,352. I don't know, I don't remember the exact number, but something like this. And um, you don't really want this in a common specification between five organizations, because then everybody puts all their stuff in there and it's not, not really manageable. So you need a way for, for this backpack to actually cling to the uh, base specification. So this is one thing we want to do. This will, will also help the, the tools that we have here with round tripping. So you can translate something from the ecosystem uh, into SDF and back. We have, we have a Yang to, to uh, SDF converter, converter, which currently dumps all this stuff in description attributes and, and that, that is of course uh, completely wrong. Um, second, um, there is some, some tool support uh, that, that should be uh, written up in particular a compact notation. We currently have JSON and JSON is not meant to be read or written by humans. Um, so uh, it would be good to have something that, that actually can be written on a whiteboard uh, without too many syntax errors. Um, the third thing is that uh, we, um, oh, unsurprisingly, found out um, we uh, links are kind of important uh, for for the IoT or for for the applications that we are looking at. Um, so we want to put in links at two levels. One is by by uh, creating links between SDF models. So SDF models can have relationships uh, that, that are extended from what we currently can do. Right, right now we can wholesale import parts of another spec, but we cannot say this is somehow related in an interesting way. So this is the relations um, document. And the other one is uh, the ability to actually put uh, links as data into affordances. So you put, for instance, have a, uh, an interaction with a light switch that tells the light switch where the light is. Um, so this is the SDF type link um, uh, document. 
And uh, finally, we have two new contributions that we will talk about today. So I'm not going to uh, go into details here. The uh, presenters uh, will do that. Any questions on this? The, the plan is uh, to look at these documents and decide what we actually want to uh, address in a recharter uh, process, then of course uh, uh, complete uh, those documents and have a wider base uh, to, to build SDF specified SDF models. I'm done. We'll go switch your slides here. Yes. <clears throat> Any other any questions about where we're where we've been? Good. So this is supposed to be a briefish introduction, so that everyone's on the same page as we go forward to chartering. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> this specification has the word semantic in its title. So uh, we use a few terms where it would be good if you know the meaning of them. Is that semantics? Um, so um, I gave this tutorial. Uh, in 2020, twice, one at a C2TRG meeting and one at, the, the ASD, at an ASDF meeting. I think it was the first ASDF meeting, um, but of course uh, online. Um, so what, what is the, the background of this? Um, the, the work on SDF didn't start with the ASDF working group. It started in an organization called One Data uh, Model. And uh, what we found is that IoT standardization usually is done within a specific ecosystem. So that, that there are the lightning people, there are some agriculture people that I don't even know much about. Um, that there are some building management people um, uh, and so on, home uh, people. And uh, these SDOs do uh, standards <laughs> for their um, environment. But a temperature sensor is, is likely very similar between these different ecosystems. And it doesn't really make sense uh, for different temperature sensors to use different data models. Because in the end, you want to, to collect, integrate all this uh, information into a common uh, database. And you, you will want to work with things from multiple um, ecosystems because uh, yeah, you won't get all the variety you need from a single uh, ecosystem. And um, of course, you can build protocol translators from each ecosystem to each other ecosystem, but then you have the n mile m, m uh, n times m problem, sorry. And um, th that's uh, just uh, getting unmanageable very quickly. So having something in the middle that can be used uh, to we used the word harmonize a while. That, that's maybe a little bit too harsh, but to, to make sure these uh, various ecosystem specific uh, uh, models uh, can be used together in one uh, common IoT application, that's uh, uh, what we want to do. So um, SDF is the semantic defi definition format. Of course, it started out as a simple definition format. Um, <laughs> It actually hasn't become more complex, uh, but uh, yeah, we decided it's a semantic it's definition. definition. Problem. Right. So really, the, the point is to um, describe the, the things you can do with, with things. And because we cannot call bo both things, we call one of them interactions. And uh, we are talking about the digital side of uh, thing. We might, might might want to do physical side things like location later, and this will come up in a couple of minutes. Um, but right now, SDF is focusing on the digital um, uh, side. And the digital side usually can be expressed as a number of affordances, which are buttons that can be pr pressed or knobs that can be uh, turned or, or uh, readings that can be taken uh, from a thing. Um, so the, the, the word affordance, which is really a, a user interface term, we just co-opted that for the digital side um, of the things uh, as well. We have three interaction patterns. We might get more in the future, but turns out a property of a thing is usually an interaction pat pattern. 
an action you can start. So on the coffee machine, you might press a button, make a coffee, that's an action. And an event, uh, for instance, the coffee machine tells you the coffee is done. Um, th these are uh, the interaction sub uh, patterns we support. And we describe these interactions uh, by uh, defining a model of their input and output data. And uh, we have uh, another thing called SDF data that we can use to, to structure um, this uh, specification and uh, reuse it. So an SDF model essentially is a, a JSON document or multiple JSON documents that are linked together with JSON uh, pointer. So we didn't reinvent the wheel there. Um, an SDF specification or SDF model can reuse elements from other SDF specifications. So you don't have to uh, write everything again. This is essentially hashing fluid, uh, um, but it can reach into another specification and just pull the part that is uh, needed. Of course, the SDF document itself, uh, the JSON text that is the SDF uh, document, uh, that is structured in some way, but that is, uh, I skip this. So what are these interaction uh, uh, patterns? Um, you probably know the REST um, uh, methods, get, put, post. We don't have REST things for events. That's something else. Um, and uh, essentially what uh, happens is that um, the input and the output uh, data uh, are uh, defined in, in the model. So these are uh, not data models. Yet. These are actually information models, but we, we are stealing some uh, data modeling uh, mechanisms to do that. So for instance, an action, which would be a post, uh, and, and uh, something where the initiative comes from the outside, uh, from the client, that has some input data and some output data. That, that's essentially uh, what, what we describe. Uh, or for instance, a property um, that might have um, a simple read mechanism, which is get, but it also might have an observable get, uh, which means uh, updates to the state uh, are simply sent by the thing to the client. No, no new interaction is needed. The interaction just continues uh, with uh, new uh, data. And of course, we have writable properties uh, that, that can be set. And an event is something the, the thing uh, does in the form of sending some output uh, data uh, to a client. Um, data is defined by their shape, as, as all data definition or schema languages uh, do. And uh, yeah, as, a, as I said, um, you don't have to, to replicate each data definition at all the places where it's need, needed. You can use pointers. Uh, we didn't want to invent a new way to describe such a schema, so we um, uh, took uh, JSON schema org. And um, since this is a data model specification mechanism, we put in some additional uh, terms. Uh, well, this is still a data model, but there are some other terms in there that really are about turning this a little bit into an information model. So we're cheating a little bit by, by using a data model language for information uh, model things, but so far that has worked very well. And finally, the, the, uh, what the mapping information that goes beyond the SDF-based specification, that will help binding these data into ecosystem specific formats and, and folders. Yeah, I think I essentially have said that. If you don't know the difference between a data model and an information model, please. Uh, do look this uh, up. Um, yeah, this is a very interesting uh, information model here, types of batteries. So this is a battery that one of our ecosystems actually has an enum value for. So um, if you ever get I'm to see one of these, you know you can describe it in SDF. Okay, so this is uh, kind of the, the UML di diagram that uh, describes we have things which can contain things and uh, objects. Um, there now should be additional lines, but I'm simplifying this here. 
Um, and the SDS object is, is the, the element that carries the various proper uh, performances from these abstractions and events, and these can share uh, data. Um, so the SDF documents themselves, of course, also are JSON text. So we can describe them by another model, which is the SDF specification. <coughs> and it's sometimes a little bit hard to, to keep these two levels apart from each other. So this, this is essentially a meta model. Um, and uh, we have defined this uh, using uh, CDDL and uh, translating this into a JSON schema uh, format um, as well. We generate two different ones that CDDL has something called features that, that JSON schema org doesn't have. Uh, so we have one that is uh, very acceptable, uh, very accept something, and one that is uh, uh, looking very close uh, what's going on. Um, yeah, so I think the status we already said, uh, three years ago, the original 1DM specification was made available to the IETF. Uh, we have something called a playground in 1DM where we put uh, stuff that has been converted from ecosystems or just put up as, as a test uh, specification. And uh, uh, some ecosystems have tools to convert their corpus of uh, data models uh, to SDF and uh, back. And as I said, we completed the work in the last call. Any questions about that? And Elliot, you're up next. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us too. Uh, my name is Bart Brinkman. I'm with Cisco, and I have with me Rohit, uh, also from Cisco, and Braden from Philips is um, listening in uh, on the web. All right. Um, so what we're trying to address with um, Nipsey is an acute problem that we're seeing at our customers, uh, our enterprise customers in the field, uh, when deploying um, IoT application. Now, the problem that we're seeing is that um, these IoT applications, they come siloed. So applications come with their own network infrastructure, come with their own devices, right? And we're starting to see more and more of these silos um, deployed in um, enterprise customers, even though that, you know, kind of the radios, uh, radio technologies or the connectivity methods, like, you know, for example, BLE or Wi-Fi, um, are already deployed um, in those customers. So we're basically seeing infrastructure being uh, duplicated. And um, the reason for that is that there's no clear, clearly defined northbound interface between that infrastructure and those applications. So the, the problems we have to solve here are how do we onboard uh, a device onto a network infrastructure from an application how do we control that device? So, and that's specifically important in, you know, uh, non-IP protocols. So, uh, protocols like um, BLE or Zigbee, for example. So, how do we exchange data um, with those devices? How do we connect to them? And then also the third one is how do we um, basically receive telemetry from um, those uh, devices? So, that's basically um, the the problem that we set out to. Um, solve. And obviously, we wanted to solve that on a standards basis, because um, when an application, you know, comes to um, uh, an enterprise network, we want it to be able to have, you know, regardless of who the uh, network provider is, a set of APIs at its disposal to integrate with that uh, network. So um, the way we approach this is um, we wanted to um, build, um, I would say, connectivity method or radio technology, if it's wireless, uh, agnostic um, APIs that are kind of extensible based on um, the connectivity method that the IoT device uh, uses. So an um, um, uh, access agnostic gateway function with um, a 
um, application specific, uh, sorry, or a radio or a technology specific um, uh, controller. And then um, we defined uh, uh, three interfaces. The first one is an onboarding interface or a provisioning interface. So this is out of scope of the NIPSI discussion. For that, um, we used SKIM and can potentially use something else as well. So, so that is moving forward. And that is applicable to IP and non-IP uh, devices. The, the interface at question where we're uh, talking about here is called NIPSI or non-IP control. That now this is uh, an API that uh, we built um, uh, to allow applications to talk to uh, non-IP devices such as um, uh, Zigbee or uh, BLE, for example. So what we did is we looked at those technologies and what we, we really up, uh, kind of up-leveled the API because in principle, the operations that they support are relatively similar. <laughs> So um, we ended up with uh, a connectivity API, which basically allows us to you know, uh, bind to devices, connect and disconnect from devices, a data API, which allows us to exchange um, data with the, the device, and a registration API. So a registration API uh, allows us to um, register things in the network for the device, such as, for example, a, a telemetry stream. And then that telemetry stream um, can support you know device broadcasts it can uh, support you know connected mode streaming data and things like connection state uh, and so forth um, so um, we've uh, we've implemented um, these apis in um, uh, uh, at cisco from an application perspective and also several application providers have done so um, we're testing them in the field with customers and uh, we also have uh, an open source implementation um, that uh, comprises of the enterprise uh, uh, network. So you can basically fully simulate uh, the network side of this and the application side of this as well. So we have sample apps as well as... Don't go too deep here. Uh, sorry? Don't go too deep. You probably want to uh, get on. Uh, we, we, yeah. we, we have sample apps and uh, as well as... Um, as well as uh, the... Um, uh, as well as... Um, libraries. Um, do you want more detail on the protocol? Or do you... No, I think you want I, more. Tell us why it's relevant to this group. All right. Um, well, why it's relevant to this group, obviously, you know, if you're if you if you are going to uh, kind of uh, define uh, a model that uh, uh, talks about how the how you interoperate with things, you have to be able to connect to them. Right. So um, 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 so ultimately, what we're trying to do is um, um, kind of define those APIs on how you actually establish you know, connectivity uh, with these devices. Also uh, from an abstracted level. So our, our APIs are um, um, generic and then extensible with um, you know, connectivity methods or uh, radio technology. So, so if you, uh, let's say, if a new radio technology comes into play, for example, or you know, kind of even a wired technology, they can be kind of slotted into the, uh, into the, uh, into the API as an extension. I think that's, that's it. more or less it, yeah. Questions, we have a minute and a half for questions. So my question is, um, are you proposing a ITF standard serialization of SDF? No. Yeah, sorry, Elliot said no. And now he's going to the mic. So what we're proposing, uh, to, to borrow a, a, a term that Karsten sort of said it, if, if you have sort of the, uh, the ASDF model on one side of the bridge, we're sort of on the other side of the bridge, probably you know, trying to provide the connectivity for, um, for the serializations that are going to come. And we know you're gonna need it. The experts are in this room to, I think, to see that we're doing the right thing. So that's why we're coming here. Oh, go ahead, Kevin. Go ahead, Kevin. 
Hello, many thanks. Uh, thanks very much for the presentation. I, I like this idea a lot. I think you could also add narrowband IT. So I work for a Vodafone cellular operator, narrowband IT. We often uh, broadcast without the IP headers. So this fits in nicely with that. I also think um, you've got a, an alignment with work going on in Etsy standards on non-IP networking for which I can um, send you something offline. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about digital twins. You want this? There you go. Thank you. Hello, everyone. First of all, thank you for taking time to closer. be here. Okay. <laughs> Uh, hello everyone, my name is Sinhan Jang Lee from Etri in South Korea. Uh, my interest area is Zeta Twin because I'm the project leader of ISO 23247 part 3 and I'm an editor of ISO ITUTY-4224 and 4605 which will be published soon. So in my research area of Zeta Twin, so I'd like to expand information of SDF for Zeta Twin. This is the background. The SDF is a format to describe things. We want to use SDF to represent things or objects as data twins, or we want to represent objects presented in SDF as data twins. Currently, uh, as far as we know, uh, there is no location information for objects in SDF. So uh, we propose adding location information SDF location to SDF. Uh, as you know, location is one of the key information for specifying objects as the SD, SD twins. As Bullman's, Mr. Bullman's uh, slide, the temperature, uh, for the temperature events, the location is very important information for, uh, for control the temperature. So, uh, and the rules and proper, um, properties for the object are in, dependent on its location. For example, uh, my in my company, my role is an engineer. Uh, so, and my property is the project I join, my skills, things like that. Uh, in the hospital, my role is a patient. And my properties is the disease, current disease, and uh, family disease, history, things like that. Uh, therefore, SDF location is needed to represent objects in the right place in the digital world, as you see in the figure. This is the information attributes for objects. Table, table one shows the template used to describe objects. This is taken from the ISO 2647 part three, uh, dealing with digital twin, a uh, digital representation of manufacturing elements. We call elements instead of things or objects in, the, in this standard. And eight kinds of objects are represented using, the, using this kind of table. And this framework can be used for almost all industries by defining objects that are used and needed in each industry domains. Uh, we use, uh, we can represent absolute or uh, rel relative locations like this. Uh, this is the, an example of personnel. Uh, as you can see in the figure uh, table two, we can uh, represent the personnel's location like this. Operator number one is located in working unit number three and 50 centimeters away from the robot number two, things like that. This is another example for equipment. This is the almo almost same as the method uh, as you see in the personnel. Uh, this is the purpose of this draft. Uh, we propose to specify the extension information of the SDF to represent the location information of the object as a digital twin. Table one shows the qualities of SDF location. Uh, location type can be the relative or absolute location, and we can add the timestamp for the duration of the location. 
this is a template and example of SF location. Uh, as you can see in the two figures, so we can uh, use this template to represent the location of the objects. This is a conclusion and future plans. We pro propose to add SDF location to SDF model, and we plan to provide more information to represent an object as a digital twins. Uh, we, we hope uh, this will be the starting point to digital twin to SDF. Thank you. Cool. Questions? A whole minute. Very good. <laughs> uh, are you going to the mic? Yes, wonderful. So, hello, David Navarro. Uh, my question is why this location couldn't be an SDF object inside your SDF thing, one of the SDF thing describing your device? Oh. Why does it have to be at the same level as the SDF property event and action? Oh, as you see in the Mr. Borman's slide, temperature test event property, things like that, but the, the location is not described in the SDF because uh, the temperature has high, but where is the temperature? So I think the location is very important information to represent something in the digital world. Yeah, I, I, I get your point, but the way I understand the SDF data model, mm -hmm. you could have a thing containing one object, <laughs> which is the temperature, with its property temperature and another object being the location with the property being the GPS coordinate or the relative position and so on. Oh, you mean the S location is included in the SDF property? I mean, the location is an SDF object SDF. and you create a thing that aggregates this SDF object location with the SDF object temperature or maybe the Temperature is a property. Oh, uh, I think the we are lacking a, a whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> I think SDF location is the same level as SDF property, SDF event, <coughs> and SDF action. So I think my proposal is SDF location to be described in the SDF object to control something, to control the objects or to describe the objects for the events, for the object, things like that. David, I think you're asking why isn't it an attribute of SDS, SDF thing? Is that what you're asking? What? Uh... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's like... I think the location is one of the information for SDF object. No, uh, I, I understand you yeah. just mean that other ecosystem or the use cases would have also very important information like you know, uh, Okay, let's uh, go on to the next, Ari. Okay. Just, yeah, just want to get the question, Q empty before we go deeper. Uh, okay, I'll be very brief, very brief. So, uh, Ari Kieran, so yeah, I'm actually thinking I'll say one as, as David. I mean, I fully uh, agree, I mean, like, digital twins very use case, good use case for SDF. I know a lot of people, including us, are using it for, and uh, location information is very important. Um, but I guess the key thing is how do we express it uh, in the SDF and what's the right vocabulary for it? And um, I was just right before this meeting experimenting with like how would we express this information you have in the slides with SDF. And I think we could get by like, like David was saying, either with SDF object or properties, but by annotating those with, for example, SDF relations, then you have vocabulary and specific way to say, hey, this is this kind of location information. Because I guess that's what you actually need here, like to be able to tell that um, whatever information is in a, in a property is specific to the kind of information that you're now showing here on the slide. So I, I can share you my draft design for that and maybe you can take a look and see if it's potentially addressing your, your problem here. What I'm hearing from the group is that everyone's really ha thinks we should have some kind of location information, but that we are undecided as to where it goes. Yes. Had a good summary? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So I want to move on to the charter discussion. Okay. And we now have about 15 minutes left from that. And I knew that we would eat up time. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and let me see, how do I turn this off? Do that. And I'm going to, yes, I want to share my screen. Uh, and that's 
of one. So if I did that right, you should all have our charter in front of you. I hope it's at a reasonable size. Do you want me to make it? I mean, I, I, I we can make it bigger and then scroll up and down. Um, um, remote people could, of course, just go to that website and do it. This is the charter. That's the charter. I know. I was about to actually blow up to that point. This is my next thing. This is background. And then the charter. Yeah. So let's do that. Um, hoo, hoo, hoo. And, uh, there you go. That's much more useful, isn't it? So effectively, um, we have done the first step of this. Okay. Uh, we have uh, worked with experts from 1DM. Um, and we've worked with CBOR and CDDL, um, mailing lists, um, and the, the, res the formal methods is, just, is, is, I think, not yet ready for our, our, our collaboration. Uh, we worked with T2G and Wishy, okay? And um, uh, so we've pretty much done all those things. Um, and then um, the question is, what's next? Um, and I, I think that there's a number of pieces that have been proposed, and I think this sentence actually captures the great deal of the future thing. So, for instance, I believe, uh, Nicholas and I had a conversation earlier today, we believe, for instance, SDF location easily fits into that, and SDF relations and a couple of other related work easily fits into that charter item already. We wouldn't need to recharter to do that. And please go ahead, Karsten, and uh, please get in the mic queue any remote people as well. Yeah, I'm in the mic queue. Um, yeah, Karsten Bormann, um, I think the, the, the two submissions we have um, are really interesting because they, they uh, open the, the view a little bit. Um, the data model or the interaction model that we uh, have right now focuses entirely on the digital side. Uh, of things, so the the from from the SDF point of view, the temperature sensor is kind of disembodies and floats through space, and adding location to it uh, adds some information about the physical uh, side. And there may be other information up about the physical side. Um, does this thing have a Shuko uh, power connector or a US or a Chinese one? Whatever. These, these are all physical descriptions we right now cannot do. Uh, and um, actually, the device does not need to know what kind of power connector it has. So um, it, it would not be something you would interact with the device about. You might interact with a digital twin about that. So that, that's one interesting thing. Um, fits so, sorry, that's a property that the digital twin would like to know because of, yes. of planning but that the device itself would have no idea ever. Yes, and the okay. asset number and the budget where the money came from and, and all this stuff. Um, the, the other uh, submission really is about uh, not just describing things, but actually doing interactions uh, with them, which I think is just another dimension in which we can uh, go. Um, the, the data model tells us what, what kinds of interactions we can um, expect to, to make, but we right now don't have a, a way uh, on the, the IP layer to talk to non-IP um, uh, devices. So I think this would also work together quite well, and it also would work together with the mapping file uh, um, proposal uh, that is out there. So to me, this, this kind of all fits together, together uh, very well. Um, so, uh, to me, this would be the basis for defining a program for the next step of ASDF. We certainly don't want to boil the whole ocean uh, here, but we might pick specific uh, points here. We're not going to do um, asset budget things or something like that, uh, but we probably should be doing things that uh, really are widely usable, like location. Nicholas, go ahead. Right. Yeah. Um, 
so I was just going to say that the um, I, I I agree. I mean, both the current proposals are extending us in in potentially very interesting uh, directions. Uh, even though, on my, my personal preference, is probably to perhaps do the location one first, uh, because that's maybe more on the kind of uh, doesn't tie us so much to, into a, a specific way of solving things like like the non-IP would do. Um, but on the other hand, I'm also a bit worried that we are um you know uh, that we have enough energy to finish things we can we can discuss it at the end but it's it's a bit of it's really good to have good use cases before we start doing things and uh, we had a very good use case when we started the, S the sdf work and i think we should have uh, the same kind of level of need uh, when we do things here yeah, I leave it to Elliot too. But Nicholas, I propose that in the last three minutes we walk through the list of uh, associated documents and kind of get a yeah, uh, a, good a, point. A, or a show of hands or something as to who actually would work on these documents. Mm. Okay, Elliot, go ahead. No, no, you you can. We're we've got nine minutes left, so lots of mic time left here. I mean, I'm going to reserve discussion until. We're at the end. Okay, so um, I think we have a pretty compelling use case for non-IP. Um, uh, and we're happy to take this into email as well to, to, to articulate it a bit more. Um, the thing that I find really cool about this is that it allows for the SDF models to be applied to devices that are very, very small. Um, and um, so we can we, we can actually extend the, the reach in terms of whether whether you you're looking at this from a meta standpoint or a direct standpoint through the through the JSON model, um, I think it gives you a, a, a good fair reach. Um, so uh, my proposal uh, is really uh, is that we go in those both directions and build the bridge. And we might not need to define serializations for everything. We might be able to borrow, beg, borrow, and steal. We might not need to do any sort of uh, transport work for IP. We could beg, borrow, and steal there too. Um, so, so you're saying we could use an existing serialization as the central to gateway, where it then becomes very Bluetooth if specific if, or something. If it's possible, I think that should be looked at. But I, I don't know that that needs to be in the charter. I, I haven't thought about. It. I haven't thought that through. I'm just thinking. Uh, let's let's apply the the generic engineering principles of beg, borrow, and steal before you build. Cool. Okay. Do, do you do you, can you propose any text that would make clear that Nipsey was in context at this point? Because at this point, I think it's kind of slippery. Neither here nor there is Francesca in our room. She remote. Yeah. Oh, she's there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can. In fact, um, we talked about this on the interim, but I need a piece of information from you. Mm -hmm. um, you had asked for um, PRs, yes, um, but I didn't know where to deliver them. Yeah, that's my fault for not actually uh, posting a, a, a revised charter uh, in time. So, so yes. So I'm sorry I, about that. I, I do think that the, the value of the, the non-IP work in particular is that it gives you the reach uh, for, for modeling all the way into the device. Um, and, and IP... Uh, you, you use the IP infrastructure to manage non-IP devices using the model. So that's the short version. Sold, not sold. I, I don't know. I'm list, trying to look around the room and trying to tr judge people's faces, but I'm actually wearing the wrong glasses, so I, they're all kind of blurry. <laughs> I'm wearing the glasses to let me see the stuff in front of me, right? Um, any comments, any reactions to what Elliot and Karsten said about steps and uh, any, uh, well, actually, I'd like to hear if there's objections. That would be most interesting more than um, um, plus ones. <laughs> yes, please just go to the mic or, or put your name in the queue and it's like we moved Elliot from the queue where you move himself. Um, Alexander Pelf. So um, thank you very much. I, I find I'm, I'm just going to to give a, a couple of uh, thoughts on the uh, Nipsey uh, proposal. So uh, uh, it, it seems to me that there is a, a problem to be solved there. I'm not sure in the way it should be approached, you know, but it, there's something to be solved or so Zigbee, BLE. Um, 
Laura, Laura One is a, is a use case, and um, there have been actually some work at the Laura Alliance in that uh, in that area for defining these kind of APIs internally. Uh, but I I I think that there is uh, um, you know a, a need at least to to start poking in that direction. I cannot say if this is the right group, but I, I say that I find interest in in that. And what I would really love also to see is if we also have like consideration of not only having the HTTP and MQTT bindings, but maybe if we have like allocate, like bring some, uh, um, if you have like non IP devices that can be brought to the IP world, for example, with Chic, then, you know, you can really have this kind of a very smooth transition between the two worlds, right? Uh, but there is definitely, at least for me, this, um, feeling of ASDF, what ASDF is doing in terms of, um, you know, bridging the gaps, like un unifying a model, a semantic unifying different <coughs> work, work on different SDOs and, and the way to manage that, like to, to do this, the connectivity part. So I'm even thinking about, okay, why RESTful API? Why, why not do it with an SDF description, like have an SDF description of the gateway and, and you know, do the actions and all that. But this is like, just first reactions that's coming to that and, and maybe it's going too far. But I, I think there is something and I would really like to see it like more with more details. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, Arke, um, yeah, I, I think it would be very useful for us to kind of continue flesh out how these things fit together. I understand now much more than I did before the weekend. So thanks a lot for all the uh, interactions here. Because how, how I see them too is that they're kind of solving the same problem but in different levels. Where NIPSI is kind of unifying access, like the low level access to the data. SDF is unifying what the data means. I mean, of course, in, in the end, we need both parts. And I think there's kind of clear connection here, but actually very little overlap at the moment. So I wouldn't say it's an SDF serialization. I mean, it's more like um, you can get this data that you can then tell with SDF what the data means. But definitely you do need the unified access and the SDF as of today is doing nothing for that. It's only describing what it actually means once you have the data. So clearly, I mean, these two things fit nicely together. Um, then let's, you know, figure out, I mean, logistically where to do it. And, and of course, some unification were probably on the APIs would be friendly towards each technology. That kind of things make a lot of sense to at least coordinate. You know, if it's not done in the same group, then it would of course happen very naturally. So Ari, I have a question for you. Um, when we chartered ASDF, one of my understandings was that one of the reasons why we were staying at the semantic level was essentially to stay out of other people's um, uh, spaces, that they had the transfer, they had all that stuff, and, and they had their own gateway, and that ASDF uh, or SDF was sim simply going to allow them to more mechanically translate between things, but that actually that was a, it was entirely a uh, um, developer level tool that never really got in the field. And so we really were never ever messing with anyone else. We were just becoming the UN, UN of, of, of models rather than, you know, <laughs> a specific industry. Right? Uh, uh, true. We, we have been playing it safe uh, on, on, on the SDF. Yeah. So, so, so what you're describing, because you were one of the original proposers, does this feel like a, cha a large change to you in direction? So I'm not yet sure. Okay. I, th I think like I understand now better how these things could fit together. I don't yet have a strong opinion how to do it. But I think like going forward with the understanding, doing whiteboarding and you know, getting a bit more specific on like how these things fit together, I think that will actually increase our understanding on how we should do it. Okay. So I wouldn't jump to conclusions right now. David. I think you're going to get the last word here before I want to jump through these documents. A lot of pressure, thank you. Um, basically, my concern about uh, an IPC were addressed by the two former persons. So, uh, and about the, the charter, I will uh, also answer to, to your question to Ari by saying that, in my view, the SDF is defining a data model and a way to represent that data model. And the interaction with the various SDOs is done through future mapping uh, files that are yet to be defined. This is the way I understand and the way I am using SDF. So 
people may have different view. Maybe I'm totally wrong on this. You had something more to say, Elliot? Yeah. First, we have a whole uh, most of a week um, still here. Um, and uh, what we'd like to do actually is maybe hold a side meeting on this to continue the conversation. Um, and the second point is that uh, uh, I'm not sure we need it just yet, but we do have this NIPSI mailing list. Thank you very much, Francesca, uh, which covers the, the non-IP part. Um, and to the point about, you know, if you're not comfortable with the way the bits are on the wire, um, this is a chartering discussion. The bits come later. Okay, absolutely. All right, so uh, I have like 30 seconds. I want to walk through this couple documents and, you know, wave or please wave, put your hands up, I guess. Um, and I'm sorry for remote people. I don't have a wave. Uh, I'm, I don't have a, a, a humming thing for you to do. So um, you could actually put in the chat, um, you know, just type the document name that you would agree to review. So who would review and work on SDF Compact? Three, four people. Okay. Uh, digital twin. Five people. Five people. Digital twin. Looks like the same five people. Sorry. Um, Nipsey. Oh, quite a few. Like more than I can easily quickly count. Okay. Uh, extended relation information for semantic definition language. Uh, it's Ari, but isn't that your document? No. Okay. <laughs> Uh, SDF type link, and we have three or four again. Okay, so you know, given the act, the, the the things, I think we have probably enough energy that you know we could get through many of these documents. But we might want to spend, uh, we might want to think carefully about what order we do them in, um, so that we're not all trying to review at the same time. Anyone have any last five second comments that you want to make before we adjourn? So Elliot says he will email the list for the side meeting. Anyone remote? Going once, going twice. I think we're done. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, Kevin had something. Kevin? No, I was just saying thanks. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> uh, how do you turn this off? Uh, do not log in automatically next time. Uh, unplug this. That went away. Hello. Hello, how are you? Uh, I'm, I'm great. Um, Welcome to the IETF. Thank you so much. I'm